Hi everybody, Hulk Rex here, and welcome to episode 163 of Mercenary Thoughts from the Inner Sphere. And yes, I'm back for a while after all the cleanup that's still going on. But hey, let's just get something on here with the battle tech. And today we're going to be talking about the Mauler, that 90-ton mech that, eh, well, you know, there's some good things and bad things about it. The Mauler, 90 tons, is a 350, so it's a slow inner sphere pig with a lot of firepower. But, well, we'll just talk about that. It carries around a XL engine, so its life expectancy has been cut in half if it, everybody decides to shoot at it. It has 11 heat sinks, so it can dissipate 22 heat. Which isn't bad. It's better than a lot of uh, earlier designs of mechs. It has 206 points of armor, which is, I think, like 60 short of max. It has a, well, a pair of ER large lasers in each arm. It has an LRM-15 in the right and left torso with a two tons of ammo and case in each torso to protect that ammo. Not that, well, it's basically the case is there to protect the, from the rest of the mech to turning into a giant catastrophic fireball. But still, it's going to kill the mech because of the XL engines. It has two AC2s in the right and left torso each with a ton of ammo. So this thing does have a lot of firepower with it, but it has limited capability when it comes to the heat. Oh, I forgot to mention it. With that case, you have fair fibrous armor. Now, like I said, it is a mech that runs around with XL engines. It has really good long distance firepower. So if you can kick back at range 21 or greater, you can start plugging away with the AC2s or the LRM15s or both combined together. Because, well, obviously you can fire the four AC2s and the two LRM-15s and not worry about heat because you can dissipate 22. So that's a good thing. Now the great uh, equation breaker is when you start tossing in those, well, ER large lasers. So if you fired both of those ER large lasers, you just went way up high on the heat scale because right there, there's 24 heat and you can only dissipate 22. So you just went up two right there. And if you ran with this thing, you were up four. That isn't counting the fact that if you throw in the LRM-15s, let's just add up another, and the AC-2s, you just added another 14 heat, and well, you just went up 18 on the heat scale. If you ran this thing. Now, if you parked it, that's only 16. Well, what the heck, you know, 16 is not that bad, right? Uh, yeah, it is. You're looking at going, okay, we might have a chance of uh, setting off some ammo or something. And, well, you know, it's one of those things where you have to prioritize your firing solution. So, typically, a lot of times you're going to be firing the LRMs and the AC2s and maybe throw in a single uh, large laser. So, there you go. So, it's like this group or you can fire two large lasers and i think you're better off to be honest with you as much as i love the er large laser it's a pretty good uh what it brings for the inner sphere at the time it doesn't really work too well you're probably better off with uh well depending on the year if you get like around 30 58 if you get the capability of throwing on some er medium lasers you might be better off with those instead and then just live with the LRMs. But, you know, this mech, uh, to be honest with you, it's not a really a good frontline mech. It's one of those mechs that you're going to be parking back with it a, a ways and doing some medium to longer range shooting, depending on uh, what your, your target is. Being that it's a 3-5 mover, it's not that fast, so it's going to have a harder time getting in there and you know, orient itself on the battlefield to a different uh, position. So it's going to take a while as a plugger. Basically, this mech's a plugger, so it's got to plug along. 
and get to where it needs to be but it has the range to make up the slowness of it so as the battlefield moves forward this thing can still provide some good long-range shooting with it even though it is you know basically sniping away with the little ac2s it may have been better if it was given let's say lbx2s or ultra twos you know to make good use of increased firepower as much as i dislike the ultra cannon it, the ultra cannon ac2 probably would work better with this one because uh you know you're going to run through the ammo pretty quickly but you know you increase your potential for doing those two little two point plinker shots and there have been many times when i was doing plinking shots with an ac2 on different mechs that hey you get that gold bb that uh, happens to hit the, the nice spot and gets in there and you know maybe do some potential damage or hit some ammo or something or if there's mechs on farther down the line that have a bunch of am armor blown off of it so they got those open spots this is a great mech that goes last and it's like hey i'm gonna just plink away and try to get some of those crit hits on it so that's you know pretty much its role in on the battlefield from my opinion uh, some individuals may like to get in close with it but if you get close with this mech uh, you're relying on those two large lasers and the AC2s because if you get within seven, uh, those LRMs are not going to be used at all. And then you have to worry about the heat problems with this thing because you're going to be firing away with those AC2s and those two large lasers and you're going to be going quickly up to heat scale. And this thing does not have jump jets, so if you heat this thing up where you start losing movement mod, uh, mods on this thing, so it becomes a 2-3 mover, yeah, this thing just becomes basically a pillbox. And it's like, oh, look at there, it's a real slow-moving mech with no movement modifiers. Hey, let's just pile, it, uh, pile on the damage and try to get into one of those right or left torsos and take out its uh, XL engine. And, hey, we don't have to do all the damage. Like, this is not going to be a zombie mech. And it doesn't take much to take a torso out. Especially if you're playing against the clans. The clans will look at this thing and go, Hey, that thing gets an XL engine on it. Let's just pile drive it. Beat it into scrap. And take that XL engine out really quickly. And then move on to the next one. So this is like, hey, easy target. Because it's has hardly any movement modifiers on it. it's lucky if it gets one all right maybe two if it's running in a straight line but against clans that is not necessarily a deal breaker because oh geez you know they, a lot of them have targeting computers they have large pulse lasers lots of medium pulse lasers so if they get in close with this thing they're going to probably rip it apart and obviously a lot of clans are running around with three pilots and two gunnery pilots so yeah it's not really a big deal for them to hammer some large slow moving mech like this into a pile of scrap now there is a few let me dig this thing up here there's a few variants on it not very many because this is a very new mech in the 3050 era all right we have the this is the 1r so the 1k is an overall replacement this comes in around 30 58 30 60 i think it is somewhere it replaces the snub the uh, lasers two large lasers with snub nose ppcs so it makes it a close uh, fighter it replaces the uh ac2s with light ac5s with enough ammo to take care of some special munitions on it and it has double more double heat sink so let me see if that is in the i don't think that i have that bring that one up here real quick i don't think i have it in my list no it's not in my uh list of mechs that i have the 1r 2r 3r and the c you know there's a 2c version interesting one okay that must have been later on when they grabbed the hold of one of those things but digress so, so that could be a, a good possibility so uh still running around 
uh, with that XL engine. Now the 2R is an, an interesting one because they got rid of the uh, XL engine, which I say is a good deal because then you can spend more time on the front line with it. Now this one uh, takes the standard AC2s and replaces them with the Ultra. I, that's basically what I just said. You know, probably a better thing to be paired up with this. Uh, you're increasing the amount of heat it puts out, but uh, it also takes care of. It has a two ER uh, large lasers been replaced with two ER medium lasers. So we're talking around 3058 here, 3060 era roughly. And then they downgraded the 15 to LRM 10s with the um, taking the half to have the, the space that needs to be used with that. So you're still 3.5, don't have the XL engines. Uh, the battle value is a little bit more, so you're looking at about 120 points more battle value, but in the long, grand scheme of things, you got a mech that has a better survivability. Even though its firepower has been greatly decreased. So basically you got a 90 ton mech with two ER medium lasers, two LRM 10s, and four AC2 Ultras. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, might be a better way to deal with that. The 3R is uh, upgrades design addresses problems with the, the 1R. Has four Ultra Cannon 2s we've been replaced with LBX 10s, a pair of LBX 10s. So, yeah, that's not a bad idea if you want to have something that's a little closer, even though uh, you're going to have probably. Let me see if I can bring that mech up. Oh, great. Wandered off on me again. There we go. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where did it go? All right. Mahler 3R. Yeah, so it has two LBX 10s. It carries around 40 or 4 tons of ammo to go with that. Two LR 15s with 4 tons of ammo. It has a C3 in it. All right, I didn't think I talked about that yet. Uh, okay, yes, it has a 2 ER large laser removed from the design but retains the LR 15. So, and then incorporates a single small laser a c3 slave so it can get into a network and it carries around the jump jet so it's a 353 so it takes care of some of that mobility problem that it, it was running into at the expense of your large lasers let me see here if that does still has the xl engine yeah so I, and then it has 10 double heat sinks. So that is sort of the heat problem has been totally blown away. So now I, the uh, you're looking at 12, 14, 15, 18 points of heat. That's not bad at all. Then you got the 20 you can dissipate. So that runs a cool mech. Firepower has been slightly decreased on it. Uh, due to the fact that you no longer have the ER large lasers, but you increase the firepower due to the fact that you have LBX 10. So you have the potential of using the shotgun effect or the solid shot effect, depending on what your target uh, that you're looking at. And I, I like that op, uh, option is, is where you can, uh, if you still want to run this thing as a crit seeker farther back, in the lance then you know use the lbx in the shotgun mode it's like everybody strips the armor off and then this thing will uh try to hit with crits now if the your target doesn't have its armor ripped off race yeah i'd go ahead and hit it with two uh 10 point shots you know from the ammo bins so rip some armor off then when the armor is low or gone then use the shotgun effect so and you have the op the also being able to hit a little slightly better but you're on a cluster table yeah it's give and take type of thing and let's see here then there's the uh the mauler c the c variant the mauler is a modification made to the 1r it carries the slave allows it to carry the slave in the battle 
achieved by removing a ton of uh, auto can uh, munitions and let's see a small modification model shared data so basically this one with a slight uh, decrease in ammo you're also part of a network so that's a uh, a good option there i don't have any problem with that one and actually that's probably a little better when it comes to uh your um firepower in the long run now uh basically if i was handed a mauler myself if by chance i got one and is part of a mercenary unit first thing i'm going to do is find uh, somebody to replace that xl engine with a standard fusion engine and say, right, here you go and i'll sell you this for this or you know get rid of the xl engine and put a standard engine in it. so obviously you're going to lose some um, have to do something to uh change things out now if it's going to be with still have the ferrofibrous armor on it i'm going to probably keep the 2er large lasers increase it to 20 13 double heat sinks keep the lrm 15 still has the case on board so it was built that way from the factory so it's, hey keep it but i'm going to drop two of the ac2s and use that tonnage to make up the difference of the uh, engine that's being sucked up now by instead of the XL engine it's for the standard engine so you're losing four points of damage for an increase of survivability and an extra heat sink so now this thing can dissipate 26 so you can fire the two ER large lasers if you want to, but this is the way that I always look at this. Uh, you got the two large LRM-15s, the two AC-2s. You can fire those at long range, medium range, and that dissipate. That's twelve heat right there, and you can dissipate twenty-six. So that leaves you room for a large laser in the mix. So you can fire a large laser, two LRM-15s, and two AC-2s up until you get in closer then when the uh when you are close then you can fire the two large lasers and maybe the ac2 or you know look at it that way and still dissipate it's kind of like here's a firing solution here's a firing solution you you know you're not able to fire all your weapons but you're having a little bit better increase in your capability now uh another thing you could always look at is downgrade one of the ER large lasers and put some medium lasers on it you could put five medium lasers or something like that but this thing is running with 278 points of armor on it so that's just one shy of maximum with that ferrofiber so that is a pretty good mech so another thing to look at is like put four medium lasers on it if you have access to a c3 system Put one of those tons into a slave and so now you have four medium lasers for up close personal work and a large laser and uh, you have the LRMs and the AC2. So that would make it a pretty decent mech uh, overall. But that's pretty much it. That is the uh, Mauler in a nutshell. It's a pretty easy mech to look at. You look at where it's going to be on the battlefield with the standard configuration of the 1R. It's standing back behind uh everybody else because basically i'm going to try to protect that thing because of the xl engines and put it in a position where it can just say park itself and let's say if you find some heavy woods or something park it don't move it and you just fire away until the ammo bays are dry and then leave the battlefield because i don't like the idea of having something with xl's uh suddenly finding itself uh, obliterated off the battlefield so there you go that is the mauler uh some individuals out there may have used it in different ways or have a different idea how they use it so if you got some information that you want to put down you know if you have uh something in rule book that you want to talk about uh let me know where it is that you have because it's hard to, at, n hard enough at times to find what uh, information that some individuals are talking about so go ahead 
Uh, let me know in your notes below, and I will talk with you later. This is Hell Craig's. Hell Craig's out.